Yeah, neuroborreliosis is really when Lyme disease affects the nervous system. So Lyme disease is famous for causing nervous system problems. Um, and it causes odd neurological problems probably about 60% of the time. And this is really research backed up. Neuroborreliosis is very strong research coming out of Columbia. It's one of the best Lyme research centers. And they have the advantage of having a psychiatrist on their Lyme research team who's very, uh, he was surprised when they first started looking. He goes, oh my goodness, the nerve damage and the nerve problems that this disease causes are astounding. My wife is experiencing some of these sim symptoms with her tick-borne illness. You get things like POTS, you get rapid heartbeats, you get vertigo, vestibular problems. I think one of the most well-documented problems that you can get is called facial nerve palsy. This is where you get a Bell's palsy or a facial nerve palsy where you literally look like you're having a stroke. So half your nerve, your, your face will just like go numb and start to sag. And so that's very scary for people. The reason that that type of neuroborreliosis is studied is because it's visible and you can see it and everybody else can see it. So you can see the problem where really in Lyme disease, that kind of thing is happening to nerves all over. But if it's happening to a vestibular nerve, you feel dizzy and disorientated and anxious. If it's happening to other nerves, you can have problems sleeping. You can have pain and tingling, but you're gonna describe these to me, but I can't see it. especially because nerve problems are very difficult to describe for most patients. You know, they use words and they go, I don't know how to describe what I am feeling. This is a big reason that I partnered with Dr. Paul. So when you come in for a new visit, people always see Dr. Paul and Dr. Warren. Dr. Paul does a very thorough neuro exam. At least half the time, the, the findings that he finds are, are surprising to people. So he makes you close your eyes and, and put your feet together. And we have people falling off you know, the, the balance plate, um, and they have no idea that they don't have good balance. They are very surprised by this. We have people who play memory games. We had someone yesterday who, you know, we, we say, okay, remember these three words, and then 10 minutes later, we ask you the three words. She couldn't remember any of them. And she goes, I didn't realize my memory was, was this bad. And this is really true for a lot of neurological problems. It's especially Lyme, it hits the frontal lobe so well. It, it it becomes difficult to become self-aware of the problems because you are aware of things through your nervous system. So when your nervous system starts betraying you, it becomes very odd sensations. So if you think, if you know you have abnormal nerve symptoms and there's a possibility it's coming from Lyme, which I tell you, in Minnesota, if you have abnormal nerve symptoms, know he's found the cause, Lyme is way high on the table. Um, we're the number five state in the country. Um, Wisconsin's number four. You do not have to leave the cities. If you've been up to the cabin or in the woods, you have a higher exposure, but you can get it here in the Twin Cities as well. So if you have unexplained neurological problems, Lyme disease is high on the table. We know that the current testing catches about 60% of the people, which means 40% fall through the cracks. And we help people in the office understand, how did you fall through the crack? What, can you run better testing to really find it and identify it? The answer most of the time is yes. Wonderful. Is it possible that if I was treated for Lyme, just regular antibiotics a long time ago, I could still develop neuroborreliosis later on? Sure, so if you've had a tick exposure, got antibiotics, and then maybe had a period of being well, could it come back out later? A lot of argument on this in the, uh, uh, kind of in the world, because the question is, can Lyme persist in your body, almost like a chicken pox virus or something? Um, for the most part, most people think no, because Lyme's a bacteria and it doesn't stay harbored in your body indefinitely like a virus would or something like that. 
Um, I will tell you that that's probably an answer more out of rhetoric than out of good research. So that's an answer that I hope future research gives us a more firm uh, idea of the possibility. And um, what we do know is that you can get bit by a tick a long time ago, and then it seems to come out and start to cause problems when you are vulnerable from maybe some high stressful event or something else happens and triggers it and allows it to kind of blossom and start to create problems. Um, but I will tell you, that's a very controversial topic that I, I hope some research can clarify in the future for us. One last question before we wrap this one up. Is it possible that not Lyme, but one of the other tick-borne culprits is causing Lyme tuberculosis? Yeah, this is one of the big problems that we have with the Lyme testing protocols is even if you get tested for Lyme, there is a certain percent of people who don't have Lyme, you have a different tick-borne disease. So it is possible to have Bartonella without Lyme. It is possible to have Babesia without Lyme or Mycoplasma without Lyme. And these can cause extremely mimicking symptoms, including some of the nerve damage. Bartonella is famous for causing nerve problems. And so most people don't get Bartonella tested unless they're positive on Lyme. This is a huge hole in the testing problem. If your Lyme test is negative, you can one, run a better Lyme test, but you can also go, do I have a different tick-borne infection that's not you know, the famous one? Right, and so that's another hole that we help people that are falling through is we go, you don't have Lyme, you have Bartonella, and nobody just tests just Bartonella. It's wonderful.